together with us. Put them together. I've got faith. 
Everybody put their hands together. Good evening, and welcome to our Wednesday night evangelistic service at San Francisco Temple in St. Louis, Missouri. We are so excited to have you join us on this evening. I would like to give honor to God, who is truly the head of my life, to my bishop, Bishop Luther J. Blackwell, Jr., our ruling elders, our chief minister, and each and every one of you in your respective places. I will be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, O oh God. We thank you for our breath of life, O oh God. Lord, we ask that you just word my mouth. Give me what to say and how to say it and prepare each and every heart to receive your word. And we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory that you alone so rightfully deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord has given me a message that I believe is so in tune with the times we're in. Perfect peace in troublous times, the war is on. As born again believers, we are admonished to see this as a way of life. Perfect peace in troublous times. How do you have perfect peace in troublous times? That appears to be an oxymoron in the natural that sounds self-contradictory, but look around. Turn on your local news wherever you reside. Turn on CNN. Now open your front door. Listen as you go about your day-to-day -day activities. Sirens are going, trouble is times. Now close your doors and step back inside. Family issues, issues with your children, whether they're small or adult children. Personal health issues. Now close your bedroom door and step back just a little bit more into your quiet zone. Troublous times. There appears to be a battlefield going on right in your mind. The word of God says in Isaiah the 26th chapter, verses three through four, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. The Lord promises to keep us in perfect peace when we keep our minds stayed on him. We're to stay on guard, to stay sober, because we're still in a war. John, the 14th chapter, the 27th verse reads, Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We're to guard our hearts. We don't have to be fearful or afraid of what's going on in our atmosphere. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what has he given us? Power, love, and a sound mind. Now let's go to the scriptures. I would like to talk about David's mighty men, specifically the mighty three. King David had 37 elite warriors. I describe them as David's elite, elite special forces who were divided into three groups and were known as the mighty men. King David's mighty three were King David's reputable fighters who had distinguished themselves on the battlefield. Believers, I must ask you this question. How do you distinguish yourself on the battlefield? Are you known as a prayer warrior? Do you provide a word of consolation to someone in need? Is your ministry whether at home or in your community, a reflection of God's kingdom at work. Let's talk about the first mighty three. First of the mighty three, Joshabim. Let's go to 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, the 8th verse, which reads, These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tachmanite, also referred to as Joshabim, that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, the same was Adino, that 
name means spear. The Esnite, he lifted up his spear against 800 whom he slew at once. Wow, now that's amazing. That's the power of God. That took focus, stamina, endurance, a watchful eye, in addition to the ability to shift and accommodate the situation. Are you able to shift and accommodate the situation to get the victory out of your circumstances? We give this warrior accolades. We are convinced, we are convinced beyond a doubt that the Lord was on his side. Despite being outnumbered, I am reminded of what the Lord told Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by my spirit, nor by spirit, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. God has always had a reputation of showing himself strong when his chosen people face odds and adversity. Joshua Beam's weapon of choice was a spear. Warriors were equipped with various weaponry, swords, shields, helmets, breastplates. You must know the right strategy to defeat your opponent. You must know the right strategy to defeat the enemy. The Ephesians, the sixth chapter, tells us about the full armor of God and its importance. A spear can inflict damage at ranges to take out swordsmen, even before they can swing their weapon. A skilled warrior with a spear can sneak around shields and hit the torso, head, and legs with ease at a range. A spear can slice, cut, thrust with extreme effectiveness. It can be used to beat a sword or soldiers to the ground. A spear can be balanced and thrown with precise accuracy when in the right hands. I'm reminded of the scripture which reads, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's a blessing to know that God's word is able to penetrate deep down to the core. And we know that the results are definitely supernatural and a blessing from God. Let's talk about the next mighty three, Eleazar. Eleazar means God has helped. God just knows the right people to put in a situation to help. He anoints his chosen to help. Let's go to 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter and the ninth verse, which reads, And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave to the sword. And the Lord, the Lord, wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. So Eleazar, he defied the Philistines. The word defy means to resist. And the word of God tells us to resist the devil and he will flee from you. The people fled. Got to ask this question. Where are people when you need them to have your back? Some say, oh, yeah, I got your back. I got you. I got your back. They got your back, right? Way back. But isn't it a blessing to know that you can always have confidence in God? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even in your midnight hour, when you're heavy, when you're burdened down, when you're crying and you have tears on your pillow, you can have assurance that God is there. He hears your every moan. He hears your every groan. He hears your every whimper because he's just that kind of God. And number three. His hand claved to the sword. Talking about Eleazar, that mighty warrior. We must hold fast to the sword. How do you hold fast to the sword? The sword being the word of God. Through pain and sickness, 
The word tells us Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Don't matter how it feels. Don't matter how it looks. Don't matter what the doctor's prognosis or diagnosis is. We serve the great physician as born again believers. Through heartache, through despair, through disappointment, through depression, the word of God lets us know. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Isn't that something what a praise can do? Just lifting you above your circumstances and your situation. That's what our God does. When your hand cleaves like that, that is some serious Holy Ghost strength some supernatural God-given adrenaline that girds you up so you can do nothing but expect deliverance. It is your heritage. Shama, the third of the three mighty. Shama. Let's go to 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, verses 11 through 12, which reads, And after him was Shama, the son of Agi, the Herorite, and the Philistines were gathered together in a troop. Where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he, talking about Shammah, stood his ground in the midst of the ground and defended it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. What lessons can we get from this? Shammah, people still leave you. The people fled. They were scared. They were probably discouraged. But as we can look back on the track record with the Philistines, even though they were some treacherous enemies, we can't forget about Goliath. God can bring a giant down. He can bring a tall mountain of adversity down. Shama stood his ground. Sometimes prayer partners will fall asleep. It's the frailty of man that I always talk about from Genesis to Revelation. But God will always be there. God allows things to happen so that we can understand that he has our back. For if God is for us, who can be against us? When the people fled, Shammah stood his ground. The enemy will gather together in a troop, in a little group. It might seem intimidating initially, but the enemy will gather himself together. But God is more powerful than the whole world against you. Remember that. So stand your ground. No matter what others think or say, the majority may not be in line with what the, God, what the word of God says. What God says matters. He is the ultimate authority. And that's what we must remember in 2022, despite what's going on in our world around us. What does God say about the matter? What does the word of God say about the matter? That's the ultimate authority. That's all that matters. So be bold in the Lord. Stand your ground. Defend your stuff. Defend your stuff. Shama defended that ground of lentils. He stood in the midst. He didn't stand on the borders, but he stood right there in the midst to defend your stuff, your family. If God says my family is going to be saved, they're going to be saved despite what it looks like now. If God says your children are going to be saved, that's what God says. You just hold on to that, despite what things look like temporarily. Your integrity, stand fast, be righteous, hold up that standard. Your stuff, don't let the adversary take your stuff. Reclaim it if you lost some footage, if you lost some ground, you lost a little footage, Get focused. Believe in God, stand your ground, and slay. Defend your faith. We're so thankful for God. So these three mighty men earned special recognition. They, number one, worked collectively. There's power in unity, especially if you're doing something in line with the will of God. God will always have your back, and give you the victory. Number two, 
recognized, these mighty three recognized that they had a common enemy that was attempting to dominate and conquer them. You have to recognize that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his motive. You know that? And guess what? You have the weaponry and Jesus on your side to help you be victorious. And number three, the mighty three had strength and might. They were strong. They were warriors. They had a reputation. But our mighty God gave them the victory. God gave them the victory. And he's the only one who gets all the glory. And the Lord left this for us in the word of God so that we can be encouraged in these times. We have the victory despite what it looks like. And I dare not end this message without giving someone an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's a perfect gift. And God wants to be victorious in all of our lives. So if you're listening to this message and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today can be your day. All you have to do is admit you're a sinner. Repent, be willing to change, believe the gospel, the good news, that Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and that he rose again. Pray and accept him into your life and confess him as your Lord and Savior. If that's you, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this hour, our breath of life. Oh God, we thank you that this word has gone forth, oh God. We praise your holy name. Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm truly sorry, oh God. And I'm willing to turn from all of my ways and accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you were crucified. You were buried. But Lord, I believe you rose again. And we thank you for it, oh God. Lord, I accept you into my life as my Lord and Savior. Lord, I thank you for saving me. If you believe that in your heart and you've confessed that prayer, guess what? It's a done deal. You're in covenant relationship. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. So no matter what you go through, no matter what's going on around you, no matter what's unsure with the times as far as the world standard, you're saved. You have the victory. God bless you and thank you for joining us for our Wednesday night evangelistic service at San Francisco Temple in St. Louis. Blessings. <laughs>